Should the women in your practice who are struggling with painful periods, PMS pain or pain all throughout their period, that cyclical pain that they complain about with their menstrual cycles, should they be taking fish oil? Hi, I'm Jessica Drummond. I'm the founder of the Integrative Pelvic Health Institute. And as a physical therapist and clinical nutritionist, it's my mission to help you as a practitioner better serve your patients integrating nutritional tools with their innate healing wisdom to help them heal faster from pelvic and women's health conditions. So let's jump right into the benefits of fish oil for the women in your practice who are struggling with that cyclical menstrual pain. First of all, you have to understand why fish oil can be useful at all. Basically, fish oil and foods that contain omega-3 fats these are foods like salmon, sardines, so fish that they actually squeeze the oil out of. They don't really take the fish and squeeze them, but you know what I mean, and put them in little capsules. But they are also from vegetarian sources, although those are not converted to the important pieces of the omega-3 fatty acids that we'll talk about in a moment nearly as well as actual fish oil. So let's talk about why and how this um, process works of converting uh, fatty acids to either pro or anti-inflammatory chemicals that help calm inflammation and lower pain in women with period pain. All right, so let's talk about omega-3 fats. Both omega-3 fats and omega-6 fats are essential, that's why they call them essential fatty acids, to get in the diet because your body cannot just make them on their own. So they are called essential fats. And there's some argument that even some of these pieces of them are essential now because we are not converting as well as we used to, and I'll talk about why in just a second. So omega-3 fats, otherwise known as alpha linolenic acid, ALA, versus omega-6 fatty acids, linoleic acid. So ALA is converted through a few biochemical steps by some shared enzymes that are in the fluid already, in the blood already. And the thing is, is these same enzymes are required to convert the omega-3s into their really useful parts and omega-6 into parts that are also useful but also pro-inflammatory. Don't forget, the inflammatory response is normal and useful if you get hurt but you also want it to stop at a certain point. The problem with inflammation is not inflammation itself, but is the fact that it becomes chronic over time. So the ratio of omega-6 and omega-3 fatty acids in the diet should ideally be one to one. We'll talk about that in a minute. So ALAs are converted by these shared enzymes to EPA and DHA. The metabolites of EPA are relatively neutral when it comes to inflammation, so they are called anti-inflammatory when you compare them to the pro-inflammatory chemicals that are converted from arachidonic acid. So ALA to EPA to DHA, and the metabolites of DHA are actually called resolvins, which help to cut off that inflammatory response, resolve the inflammatory response, rehab the inflammatory response, if you will. All right, so omega-6 fatty acids trans, um, converted from linoleic acid to, through many steps using different enzymes, to arachidonic acid. And those, can, those are converted to pro-inflammatory eicosanoids things like prostaglandins. That's why people take things like aspirin, because they inhibit prostaglandins, thromboxanes, and leukotrienes. So all of these pro-inflammatory eicosanoids, there's too much of them if your diet is really high in things like vegetable oils and seed oils and other oils that are inflammatory, omega-6. Good to have some, but you also need to balance it with a lot of omega-3s. This is why societies that eat a lot of fish have this kind of relatively high amount of omega-3 balancing out any of the omega-6 fatty acids that they have. So that's the goal for you and the women that you work with that have cyclical period pain. All right, 
So let's talk about this study that just came out recently in the International Journal of Gynecological Obstetrics. They had a group of young men, women with primary dysmenorrhea, period pain. They gave them fish oil supplements, you like my little fish, daily three, for three months. And that dramatically decreased their need for ibuprofen during that painful period time, PMS time. And I have seen this so often in my practice. This works really well. One of my clients, oh gosh, just about three months ago now, started on my program. She changed her diet, added omega-3 fats, and she went from requiring 16, up to 1,600 milligrams of ibuprofen to control that period pain to after just two months needing zero, no ibuprofen at all, none, none, none. And that effect, of course, while she's maintaining the dietary changes, has lasted now for more than three months. So this works really well in women suffering from period pain to get their omega-3 fats up and their omega-6 fats down so you get to that ideal ratio of one to one. Right now, in the standard American diet, the ratio is more like 20 to one. In good cases, it's like six to one. So it's really just an imbalance. It's not that omega-6 are bad, but there's just too much compared to the omega-3s that we are taking in. The good news is there's even more benefits of getting this ratio to one to one. Increased uterine blood flow. So women who are struggling with infertility are more likely to facilitate actually having a pregnancy when they get this ratio right because of increased uterine blood flow that comes from it. You also increase placental blood flow, lowering the risk of premature birth. Baby's brain development. You know, the brain is like made of fat. So if you are not eating enough omega-3 fats as a pregnant woman, your baby's brain doesn't get all that juicy fat that it needs to really well develop. And this can continue through nursing. So your patients who are nursing, who are pregnant, really need to work on getting this ratio good for their baby's brain development. Postpartum depression. So the mom's brain we're talking about now, there's more and more research out connecting inflammation with depression. So as we get that inflammation back in balance, rehab, if you will, that inflammation from getting out of control and becoming chronic, you know, uh, facilitating the, the development, the creation of those resolvents, you calm the inflammation in the mom's brain as well, limiting the risk for postpartum depression. Also limiting the risk for osteoporosis and breast cancer, potentially other inflammatory issues, and lowering the risk of having high triglycerides. This is really important because women who are on hormonal therapy are at risk for having higher triglycerides, so we're protecting the heart. All right, so in the comments below, I want you to talk about, ask me your number one most burning question about omega-3 fats, fish, fish oil, Oh, and I want you to know it's very important, the source of the omega-3 fish oil. Just that kind of omega-3 fish oil that you can just get at Costco, poor quality fish oil that smells fishy, it might be rancid, hasn't been third-party tested for toxins. That fish oil is actually bad for you and pro-inflammatory and can cause or contribute to diabetes. So you want a high quality fish oil recommendation for your patients. Tell me the number one thing that you learned, how you'll take it into the clinic this week and help your patients balance out their omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acid ratio and get rid completely of the ibuprofen that they need for that period pain. Again, I'm Jessica Drummond of the Integrative Public Health Institute. It was great to see you here. Please like and share this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.